Breaking tonight, there is growing outrage from vets and military families after terrorists capture an Iraqi city that Americans die to liberate. And the White House tonight dismisses the loss as a, quote, minor setback. Good evening and welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. Just last night on this broadcast, we brought you the disturbing images of the Islamic State terror flag being raised over the Iraqi city of Ramadi. The terrorists captured the prize over the weekend. And today we got a copy of this video. Iraqi soldiers scrambling in, in a chaotic retreat as the terrorists swept in. Over the course of the Iraq war, more than 200 American soldiers were killed in Ramadi. In firefights like this one from April 2006. Just a few months later, a Portland, Oregon native by the name of Mark Lee would be the very first Navy SEAL killed in Ramadi. Fatally wounded while trying to protect another SEAL during a firefight in what would become known as the Battle of Ramadi. Just last month, when General Martin Dempsey dismissed Ramadi as an unimportant symbol, Mark's mother, Debbie, wrote an open letter to General Dempsey, writing, quote, My son and many others gave their future in Ramadi. Ramadi mattered to them. Yesterday, Debbie Lee described the fall of Ramadi as gut-wrenching. And when challenged on that today, on Ramadi, here is how the White House responded. We have to sort of decide uh, what our approach to these issues is going to be. Are we going to... Uh, uh, light our hair on fire uh, every time that there is a setback in the campaign against ISIL? Or are we going to take very seriously our responsibility to evaluate those areas where we succeed uh, and evaluate where steps are necessary for us to change our strategy where we've sustained setbacks? Joining me now, Pete Hegseth. He's an Iraq and Afghanistan war veteran and CEO of Concerned Veterans for America. And General Jack Keane is chairman of the Institute for the Study of War. Pete, I want to begin with you. Uh, you were there. You were in Iraq. You fought. And now tonight to hear the White House dismiss this as a setback and say, what are mm -hmm. we going to do? Light our hair on fire every time there's a setback? <laughs> what, so dismissive. What are we gonna it's incredibly dismissive. Guess what? In other news, in Mosul, in Ramadi, in Fallujah, ISIS is literally lighting people on fire. Every setback for the White House is a massacre. Every setback for the White House is a stain on someone like Mark Lee and what they gave in Ramadi. Every setback makes it that much more difficult to retake a Ramadi, emboldens ISIS, and, and undermines our credibility in that region. It underscores how, fu how fundamentally disconnected they are from the nature of the enemy that we face. Bill Bob Gates said it right today. They have no strategy at all in Iraq or the Middle East, and they have the audacity, Megan, to call it an overall success. Find me one strategic success. Airstrikes, have it roll them back. Training, God bless the guys doing their best on the ground, but the Iraqi army is not capable. And the political resolution that they always talk about, where is it? Iran is closer to, to Baghdad than ever today, mm -hmm. than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Listen to Josh Ernest go on to just describe the success, and, and he was challenged on that assertion by Jonathan Carl. Listen. Would you say that overall this strategy has been a success? Well, uh, John, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, yes. overall, yes. That doesn't mean that there haven't been areas of, of setback, as we saw in Ramadi. Overall, it's a, it's a success. We've lost Mosul. We've lost Ramadi. We lost Fallujah. Almost all of Am Ambar province is gone. I, I got to call it the Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars strategy. These are not the droids you're looking for. Failure equals success. If we say it so, it is so. This is what they've employed across the board. From Yemen, it's a success? Nope, it's a failure. Libya, it's a model of 21st century warfare. Utter chaos today. Reset in Russia? Well, it's going to work. No, it isn't. They tell us what they want the American people to think and hear, and it has a fundamentally disconnect from what's happening on the ground. A willful suspension of disbelief, you might say to quote our former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton as she, as she talked about the Iraq surge that she was so wrong about. This administration has been wrong about precipitous retreat uh, from Iraq and the consequences are in the sands of Ramadi and men like, uh, men like Mark who gave so much, Mark Lee, uh, are, their families are wondering, was it worth it? It was because they gave so much. But this administration is, is, is backhanding these families by saying, oh, it's successful. It doesn't really matter. It does. And we're bearing the fruits of a bad policy right now. We can't forget them. We cannot forget the sacrifices these guys made as we look at whether this is important or not. Pete, thank you. Thank you. Well, Bob Gates served as a defense secretary under both President Bush and President Obama, and he got a lot of attention today when he suggested that the U.S. has, quote, no Middle East strategy at all. Appearing on Fox and Friends this morning, he specifically talked about how the White House has reacted to the fall of Ramadi. Listen. 
I think to to refer to what happened in Ramadi uh, as as simply a setback, and that we will help to say that we will help the uh, Iraqis regain it. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly, the gap between the rhetoric and getting it done, I think, is pretty significant. I got. I mean, they've they've got Ramadi, they've got Fallujah, they've got Mosul. Uh, getting them out of these cities is going to be incredibly tough. Joining me now, the architect of the successful Iraq surge. General Jack Keane, who is chairman of the Institute for the Study of War. General, good to see you tonight. And so how can it be that as late as Friday, the Pentagon was out there saying that ISIS was on the defensive and downplaying fears about losing Ramadi? Yeah, that's actually outrageous. The, the facts are what they are. You know, ISIS is, is a very determined, resourceful, and ambitious enemy. And we, we have to look at them for, for who they are and admit that and not underestimate it, number one, and then see what they're truly doing. I mean, the ledger is on ISIS side, not on our side, and, and that is they're expanding in Syria, in western and eastern Syria. They're able to attack Megan with freedom of movement any place at any time they choose inside Iraq, and they're expanding into Libya, Yemen, the Sinai, and Afghanistan. So they're, they're having a regional approach while they're defending somewhat successfully against the United States and the coalition inside of Iraq and Syria. That ledger is a plus for them and certainly a minus for us. When so we I, have to be honest about when it. When I listen to you say that, expanding into uh, Egyptian Sinai, Libya, Yemen, Afghanistan, Pakistan, throughout Syria, I, I recall President Obama's remarks uh, not long ago saying the following about ISIS. Listen. Our coalition is on the offensive. ISIL is on the defensive, and ISIL is going to lose. What happened to that? What happened to ISIL on the defensive? Yeah, see, we got to see reality as the way it is. This is a disturbing and frightening echo to what we had in 2006, a different administration, when we were failing in Iraq, and the government officials and the military generals were defending the strategy despite the evidence that it was failing. Here we have government officials, the President of the United States in this case, and also military leaders defending a failing strategy. And what the problem with that is, you're not going to fix it as long as you're defending it. You got to face the truth, admit to yourself that it's failing, and then get on with fixing the strategy. Iraq, despite what we have seen in Ramadi and how tragic that is, is not lost yet. We can reverse some of this. It's going to be really? very difficult. Really? Because, I mean, the president is now meeting with his national security team tonight, we're told, to discuss strategy. I mean, the, the Washington Post editorial board came out last night and said, you have none. It's time to admit it. You, you, right. w there's no defending you on this anymore. You have no strategy. And, it, and by all accounts, we're losing, General. We're losing. And so well, is there any saying. turning that around under this president the way he sees this conflict? The only way he can turn this around is, number one, we're talking about tough-minded, calm and imaginative leadership to think through what this problem is and accept the risk that goes with winning wars. War is fundamentally a test of will. And we can put together a strategy to deal with this situation. And we, we have talked about it for nine months in terms of what, what we need to do. We need advisors down on the ground with these Iraqi forces to help stiffen their resolve and also provide support for them when they need it. Surveillance aircraft, close air support, attack helicopters. We need considerably more trainers than what we have to train up the scale and size and, and, and of the Iraqi forces. Believe it or not, General Jack Keane is now saying the same thing as the Washington Post editorial board, and yet those same things have been said for months. And, and, and it ju it's just changing. not happening. I, the I, other thing is you saw the successful attack in Syria. Yeah. Uh, we should be doing that multiple times a night in Iraq and Syria, as we had done eight to ten times on average in Iraq and Afghanistan. It is possible to put in play a strategy that's going to help the forces on the ground and still make some progress. Yeah, that, is still, uh, that is still an option, but I'm not co confident that this administration will face up to that reality. Well, it takes a lot of will, uh, and our viewers should know, when, when President Bush was failing in Iraq, they turned to Jack Keane 
and they said he went in there and said you need to fire your generals and you need to come up with a new war strategy and guess what they listened to him and the surge was put into place and there was the Anbar awakening and we had Iraq it Joe Biden said it was going to be a huge success and now it's gone and they can they should consider listening to him again he's got a lot of good ideas general good to see you yeah good talking to you as always Megan I mean imagine that imagine the courage that took under very scary circumstances, but where do we go now as we have real fears of a prolonged, another ground war in Iraq and the American people have fears about it as well. Meantime, there are new developments tonight in the controversy involving ABC newsman George Stephanopoulos and how he failed to disclose his donations to the Clinton Foundation even as he was covering the story about that foundation. Britt Hume is here tonight on what we just learned about George's situation at ABC News. Plus, after Baltimore police were criticized and investigated by local, state, and federal officials, specifically thrown under the bus by the prosecutor in a very public press conference, they were warned that they would have to change how they worked and wait until you hear what, shockingly, is happening now with violent crime in this troubled city. I've heard your calls for no justice, no peace. However, your peace is sincerely needed as I work to deliver justice on behalf of Freddie Gray.